This is Malik Kahuk from the University of Colorado, and I'll be discussing glaucoma to cyclitic crisis in this edition of One Slide in Five Minutes. Glaucoma to cyclitic crisis, also known as posner schlossman syndrome, is an acute unilateral disease process with mild anterior chamber inflammation and elevation of intraocular pressure that is recurrent. Damage to the optic nerve occurs after repeated attacks over a long period of time. The cause is unknown at this time, despite several hypotheses which have been explored since the first cases were reported by Posner and Schlossman in 1948. The typical patient is 20 to 50 years old with complaints of mild ocular discomfort and blurred vision. Examination reveals a mild inflammatory reaction in the anterior chamber with inferiorly distributed fine keratic precipitates and elevated IOP with a pressure up to 70 millimeters of mercury. Blurring of the vision and halos occur when corneal edema is present secondary to the elevated IOP. The iris may become ischemic due to extreme IOP elevation and the pupil may be mid-dilated. The conjunctiva is often unremarkable. Gonioscopy reveals normal angle anatomy except for sparse inflammatory debris. Keratic precipitates can be identified over the trabecular meshwork. And you can see here in this gonioscopic photo of the angle, fine keratic precipitates that are overlying the trabecular meshwork that are indicative of a trabeculitis process. The patient may recall other similar episodes that are short lasting and may be separated by months or years, which adds to the diagnostic difficulty given the low likelihood of patients remembering episodes that occurred in the distant past. The optic nerve remains normal early in the course of the disease, but optic nerve cupping and visual field defects arise after multiple attacks. Examination of the anterior chamber and IOP between attacks are unremarkable, often leading to confusion and delayed diagnosis. The diagnosis is often one of exclusion, and as such, laboratory testing, including viral PCR and aqueous humor for HSV, VZV, and CMV titers, may be ordered to exclude infectious uveitis. Other possible etiologies that remain unproven include autonomic dysregulation, vascular endothelial pathology, allergic reactions, autoimmune disease, or as stated, viral infections. Differential diagnosis includes ocular hypertension, acute angle closure, neovascular glaucoma, steroid response glaucoma, uveitic glaucoma, and Fuchs heterochromic iridocyclitis. It is worth noting that Fuchs is also unilateral, but rarely has IOP elevation to the degree seen with glaucoma to cyclitic crisis, and the inflammation in Fuchs does not respond to anti-inflammatory therapy. Treatment includes IOP control, which is achieved with traditional topical pressure-lowering drops. While some authors have advised avoiding prostaglandin analogs, there is no evidence that prostaglandin analogs exacerbate the inflammation in this clinical scenario. Pilocarpine should be avoided as it might lead to vascular leakage. Steroids have been used to treat inflammation, although, as stated before, the attacks are short-lasting and the inflammation frequently resolves without use of steroids. Non-steroidals can also be used and may spare steroid-related IOP spikes. Filtration surgery has been used in advanced disease to control spikes in IOP once glaucomatous optic neuropathy manifests. Consider visiting keogt.com for further information on glaucoma. You can see the YouTube link here for further videos, which are also posted on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for your time.